Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to break down how to spot and track a trade using the interval flow tool. We'll also cover the interval flow filters that were used in finding this trade and how you can use the other pages for that contract to get more information about a set of transactions. Now the interval flow is just another iteration of the flow feed, only transactions are aggregated into a set time interval. You can adjust that time interval between 5, 10, and 30 minutes. This means that any contracts that appear in this interval flow feed are those who have enough transactions within the selected time interval to meet the criteria that we set in these filters. So let's start off right now by going through and building a filter, one that I personally use and the one that was used to track the trade that we'll be talking about in this video. For this filter, I'm primarily looking for ask side transactions with a high chance of opening trades, where the majority of the volume coming in on that contract occurs within a short time frame. To achieve this, I'll first set my time interval to five minutes. Like I said, I want it to be within a short time frame. For the equity type, I'm gonna turn off ETFs and indices to weed out the noise and hedging mechanisms that can sometimes be seen in SPY, QQQ, etc. I also want to see both calls and puts for this filter. It's not for an overall directional bias. I want to see individual names and contracts here, both calls and puts. I also want to see all expiration dates and all sectors for this filter. And so I'll leave calls and puts on and expiry and sectors blank. Now down here, we get to the spicy filters for the interval activity. These are the criteria that flow must meet within the selected time interval in order to appear in this feed. Now, I mentioned I wanted to see ask side activity where a large portion of the volume occurs within this time minute interval. So the percent total volume, I'm gonna put a 0.65 here to represent 65% of that contract's volume occurring within this five minute interval. For volume, I don't want it to be too low because then I'll get too much data, but I also don't want it to be too high because I might miss some lower volume contracts or lower volume stocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a modest 500 contracts. We'll still see some noise in here, but it'll also help me hit on some lower volume names as well. For the volume to open interest ratio, we always discuss that to be absolutely certain a trade is new, opening position, that the size of the trade must be greater than the open interest. But other contexts can help you dictate new positions as well. So in this case, I don't want the volume to be below open interest, but it doesn't necessarily need to be two times the open interest for me to be interested in the flow. I'll set this to 1.05 or more, meaning there is higher volume than open interest, but it can still be kind of close. Now, like I'd said, I want mostly ask side transactions possibly to open in this interval feed. So I'm going to set the ask percent to 0.7. This means that 70% of that contract's volume will have transacted on the ask side of the bid ask spread. So naturally, I'll also leave that bid percent and skew percent zero because I'm looking for ask side transactions for this filter. Now, also within this filter, I'm not really looking for multi-leg transactions, but I don't want to write off any contracts just because there was some volume involved in multi-leg transactions. I'll keep this range set from zero to 25% of the volume containing multi-leg trades. For premium, I don't wanna just catch a bunch of one cent contracts with no other context, but I don't wanna miss smaller names either. I'll set this to at least 10,000 in premium, transacted within that five minute time interval. Now below we have these quick filter sliders and I'm gonna take us back to that topic of volume versus open interest. I mentioned I don't need a crazy ratio for this filter, but I do want the volume transacted within this five minute interval to be higher than open interest overall. So I'll set this interval volume greater than open interest to on. Obviously that also means I want the total volume on the day to also be greater than open interest. So that one's also on. And then I'm gonna turn the exclude in the money slider on as well here. 
to exclude in the money contracts that may not give a directional bias due to hedging or arbitrage. I've left the rest of these filters blank. Now we're looking at this filter as it appeared on Friday, April 26th. And there were a few contracts that caught my eye, but the one we're going to look at here is this Tesla $210 call for June 21st, 2024 down here. While the volume isn't significantly higher than the open interest, the volume that transacted just within that five minute time frame was higher than the outstanding contracts. 11,698 volume versus just 9,292 open interest. Not only that, I kind of had the context that Tesla has been taking a bit of a beating lately, and many were betting on a rebound in the stock. Now, clicking into the chain summary of the contract for April 26th, we can see fairly clearly that nearly all of the volume transacted came within that five minute time frame, and almost all of it transacted at the ask side. So let's go ahead and click on that volume candle for the five minute interval between 1245 and 1250 p.m. Central. Doing so automatically takes you to the flow feed with the filter set to that exact time frame. In the feed here, we can clearly see the repeated ask side orders on the contract filling at 233 to 234 per contract. The transactions also triggered a repeated hits alert, which was followed by two large transactions. That's interesting. So we can save these transactions to look at later to our my trades by clicking the heart next to them. Now, although none of these trades had a size greater than open interest, the total volume transacted in that time interval quickly overtook the outstanding open interest. We can hypothesize that this is a new position due to this nature of the fills. Now, it's not a guarantee that all were opening trades, but it does seem much more likely than position closures. And to kind of help us deduce that, looking back at the historical flow for this contract, it looks quite a bit like this position's been building up to varying degrees, both at the bid and at the ask, over quite a bit of time now. So it seems a little less likely that that volume that was transacting was positional closures due to the nature of how that open interest came to be. We didn't see two massive orders of 3,000 and 2,700 coming in. So it stands to reason that we're looking at something new here. Now on April 29th, Tesla has indeed rallied. We can pop this contract open in the contract lookup and see the results. Of the 11,698 volume that transacted on Friday the 25th, 8,534 carried over into open interest. That's a hard conversation of new positions opening. In the case of this contract, however, waiting for the confirmation would have missed the move, which is why that context I talked about earlier is really useful for higher volume tickers like Tesla. On the morning of April 29th, Tesla had already gapped up from around $168 per share to $190 plus dollars per share. Over the course of the morning, Tesla continued its uptrend and topped out on the day at around $198.92 per share. At that high of day, this position had gone from their original entry of $2.33 per contract to a high of $12.85 per contract, a 451% gain. Now looking back at the Contract Explorer, we can see that there has indeed been some volume transacted today, split about 50-50 between the bid and the ask on those fills. So it's hard to tell right now if any of that position has taken profit, how much of it is staying open. We'll only know that once we see that open interest update again on the next trading day. But that about wraps it up for this one on Interval Flow, you guys. I hope this helped you understand a little bit better how you can utilize Interval Flow and the filters to help you track trades and understand the context between the volume that's transacting and the open interest that exists and help you understand more about the context about order fills and kind of following along with how those trades pan out over time using the Contract Explorer. Be on the lookout for the next one, guys. Thanks for tuning in.